Hi, Juan. Hi, Sophie. Hi. Hi. Well, welcome to our webinar. We'll go ahead and get started. And then if y'all have questions, you can put them in the chat room or just unmute and give us those questions. Um, we'll give you a little information. Uh, first of all, before we get started, uh, why don't just, just a couple of us, tell us the programs you're interested in. Juan, go first. Tell us what program you're interested in. Exercise science. Okay, exercise science. And Sophie? I'm also in exercise science. And this is my roommate. She as I'm well. I'm also exercise science. Oh, great. Very good. Tell, what's your roommate's name? I'm OCN. Sorry, I, do you want me to join on my own laptop? I was going to join too. No, you, you do it whichever way you like. Okay. So whichever way works best for you is great. Um, so if y'all have any questions, jump in and, and ask those questions. Um, there's two of us here today. I'm Lainey Dornier. I'm the director of the kinesiology program here at Tulane University. And we have Dan Rahe, who's the advisor for all undergraduate programs. So both exercise science and health and wellness. It's good knowing y'all are both in exercise science. So I'll give a little bit more information and Dan can too about the exercise science program here at Tulane University. Uh, so a little bit about SOPA. Uh, so some people don't know, but SOPA was actually founded back in the 1800s. It was the first continuing education class, first offer continuing education classes in 1886. And so we really were developed as a part of Tulane University to offer applied programs to adult learners. And we continue to do that today. So even though our focus is on applied programs to adult learners, we actually offer, the, we, our programs are available to a wide variety of students, both traditional Tulane students that are just entering college as well as adults who may have been out for several years and coming back to school to earn their degree. So we really think that uh, adds to our programs. You could be in a class both with 18 to 21 year olds that are in college for the first time and 40, 50, 60 year olds who are coming back to college to continue their education. So we think it cre creates a really diverse pool of students and creates some really nice dialogue that can happen in our classes. Um, so our programs are offered both online and on ground. The exercise science program, the undergraduate exercise science program is predominantly on ground. And that's because the majority of classes in that program are science oriented classes and they're more difficult to teach online. We do offer some classes online, so you will have the opportunity to take some classes online. Um, some of those classes will be the more the, the entry level classes like Kinesiology 1500 and Kinesiology 3110, which is sport and exercise psychology. Our faculty, we use both full-time faculty and adjunct faculty. So some of the faculty teaching our classes are actually experts in the field that they're teaching. So for example, um, the, the person teaching our uh, exercise physiology class is actually the swimming and diving coach here, but he actually has a PhD in exercise physiology. So he's an expert in exercise physiology. We offer a lot of student support. I'll let Dan tell you a little bit about student support. Yeah, so, oh, they went to online learning there, but, uh... Is that the correct? Yeah, you can still, we're just talking about all these different ones. I uh, gotcha, yeah, um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, uh, you know, student support, we have a lot of uh, things, you know, to help our students succeed at the school. Uh, the academic advisors in any of our programs are all well equipped to, uh, myself included, to um, assist you along your educational, you know, journey from start to finish to get you set up for your classes, to get your major declared. Um, to pretty much assist you with anything you need along the way. Um, financial aid advisors are, are separately assigned to students, so that's an area where we would not, you know, um, be assisting you. But um, we're there for you, you know, um, every step of the way. And um, we have other um, student supports. Uh, we have a career advisor who, um, you know, it's good to work with, with, you know, touching up your resume or, um, you know, 
doing career tests. Uh, she teaches a class as well uh, called Career and Success Strategies that a lot of students have been taking recently because they've learned a lot and gained a lot from it, how to set up a LinkedIn profile and market yourself and, and all those little things like that that, um, um, that you can do that, um, you know, she, she's uh, a good resource to have at our school. And then, you know, we have, um, you know, a, a, a writing center for students who struggle in, in English that is available to our students now. And we have, um, excuse me, um, uh, tutoring options for, uh, you know, certain courses at the school uh, that students can do. Then there's also outside tutors that is all linked through Tulane. Um, we have, you um, you know, CAPS counseling and personnel services. So if, you know, any kind of um, assistance that you need to help you succeed and to, you know, get over those humps um, are, are, are available to you as a SOPA student, um, whether you're part-time or full-time basically, you yeah. know. Great, Th thanks, Dan. And um, so, and, and you know, we, we do advertise our program as affordable and flexible also. If you are a SOPA student coming back to school, so if you're an adult learner coming back to school, um, there is the tuition is a little bit lower than regular uh, Tulane. And we also offer scholarships that are available and you can look at those online. All right, next slide. Um, so we do a lot of our classes as I mentioned, we have online learning at SOPA. All of our classes that are offered online go through an online workshop. So they're developed by experts on online learning so that they look very similar. Um, all of our classes have original lectures with them and then they're, they're set up by modules if they're online. So there are 12 modules for a 14 semester, I mean 14 week semester. And we really emphasize in our online learning engagement with students. So when you're taking an online class, we, it's not just going on there and filling out material. We want the students to be engaged. So every module might have a discussion that the students have to be engaged with each other and with the professor. They also have informative videos. We have um, assignments and, and uh, interactive materials for students so that the online classes really are fun. Also, some of the classes require you to work in groups. So the, even though it's an online class, you may be required to get in groups with colleagues that you're in the class with to solve problems or do presentations. Every class, every online class also has a face-to-face -face component. So our undergraduate classes have a requirement of at least two face-to-face -face components. And not y'all aren't in this, but the graduate classes have four face-to-face. -face. Some faculty will have more face-to-face -face components, which are all done through Zoom. So if it's an online class, the face-to-face -face components will be done during Zoom. We do want our students, even in online learning, to focus on communication skills. So you may have to do presentations and actually do videos that you have to upload to the Canvas site. We do have a lot of online classes. So here's a slide that tells you a little bit of overview. We had a little over almost 1,400 students completing over 12,000 hours of online coursework in the last year. We have eight master's degree, 11 graduate certificates, and four post-bac certificates that are all offered online. So we have 320 courses that are all developed to be taught online. And we have over 200 faculty trained in effective online instruction. So we really do take online instruction seriously. And uh, we think we do a really good job at our online instruction. So in kinesiology, and I know you're interested in exercise science, but just so you get a breadth of knowledge about what we're doing in kinesiology. Kinesiology really is the study of human movement. And whether you're studying human movement from like a health perspective or a sports perspective, that's all part of what this umbrella that we call kinesiology. If we, if, if we offer an undergraduate degree in health and wellness management and in exercise science, and then we offer master's degrees in health and, well, I mean, in health and wellness management and sports studies. It covers a variety of courses. The health, the health and wellness curriculum covers courses in nutritious, nutrition, weight control, stress management, community health. And then our exercise science is really geared towards students who are interested in uh, applied, I mean, allied health programs 
and it offers more science-oriented classes like motor learning, exercise physiology, biomechanics, exercise prescription, and sports medicine. Next slide. The BA in Health and Wellness is 120 credit hour uh, BA, Bachelor of Arts, with 30 hours in the, in the major. Again, we offer classes both on ground and, and online. And some of the career options in health and wellness is fitness coordinator or rec coordinator or wellness program director, behavioral health specialist or certified personal trainer. We also offer a four plus one program, which is a great program for students who do wellness degree. The four plus one is as a senior. And so as a junior, you would apply for this program, but as a senior, you would be allowed to take up to six hours of graduate coursework in the health and wellness management master's degree. And they would count both towards your undergraduate degree and your master's degree. So it kind of lets you double dip, dip six hours of coursework. We don't have this right now for the exercise science degree. So it is only for the health and wellness degree. And it kind of gives you a speed up on finishing that master's degree because you will have finished six hours as an undergraduate before you actually start the master's degree program. So it's a pretty good program for those in health and wellness. Next slide. The, uh, what you, what you are all interested in, the Bachelor of Science and Exercise Science. Again, it's a 120 hour credit program and it has 40 hours in the major. It is available on ground or a combination on ground and online. There are very few courses offered online in this degree program. The uh, introduction, kinesiology 1500 and the sport and exercise psychology and the motor development are the only three that are offered online right now. But uh, a lot of students interested in this program are interested in going into allied health programs like physical therapy, occupational therapy. And our program is designed to complete the requirements for most allied health programs. But if you really are interested in a, going to an allied health program, I would suggest that you look into that allied health program, look and see what the requirements are to get into that allied health program and make sure you're completing the requirements for that program. There is some flexibility in your general ed requirements under science and under humanities. So if a particular allied health program that you want to apply to offers a course that we don't require, I would encourage you to take that as part of your general ed requirements in uh, science or humanities. This one doesn't have a four plus one program, so that should probably come off of the slide. Um, we don't have the four plus one in exercise science. However, you do need to be aware that in the exercise science program, there is a sequence of classes that are required. And so if you're interested in this program, make sure you look at that. For example, EBIO 1010 or Cell 1010 are required in order to take the anatomy and physiology. And then anatomy and physiology is required to be able to take exercise physiology and exercise prescription. So there is a series. We do have new anatomy and physiology classes. Prior to coming up fall, the only anatomy and physiology classes were the SCEN 3030 and 3040 along with their labs. And those are cadaver labs. Those are cadaver classes. They're very difficult to get in. And our students sometimes had difficulty getting into them. We've now created a new SOPA section of anatomy and SOPA section of physiology. And they are SCEN 2030 and 2040 with the associated labs. And so you'll see that if you list, if you look in the required classes for kinesiology, it now lists the SOPA sections, which are the 2000 level. Those are a little bit different than the 3000 level. The 2000 level courses are taught as anatomy for one semester and physiology for the next semester. At the 3000 level, it's anatomy and physiology intertwined together across two semesters. So for example, if you start taking the 2000 level, you need to take the 2000 level for both classes. If you start with a 3000 level, you need to take it for both classes. You can't switch them. And you have to take the adjoining lab associated with each one of those also. So make sure you're aware of that when you start the exercise science program. All right, next slide. We do have a post back certificate. The post back certificate is a six, six courses, undergraduate courses, 
And this is for individuals that have already earned a bachelor's degree that may want to come back and kind of learn a little bit about health and wellness or kinesiology um, that, that maybe that would help their field. So it's a post back certificate. And it's only in health and wellness. We don't have it in exercise science. Next slide. We do have diverse faculty and I kind of mentioned this earlier. This is some examples of our faculty, but we have adjunct faculty who are actually experts in the area that they're teaching. And so for example, one of our faculty, R.T. Hill, he teaches biomechanics and uh, the human body and he's actually a physical therapist and he works in physical therapy in and around the New Orleans community. We have Irena Tereshenko who teaches in our graduate program and she is actually a national champion pickleball player and coaches tennis and she teaches a coaching class for us. So that's a great uh, advantage for us. Tyra Mitchell is a former chief physical therapist at Oshner Health, and she teaches a lot of our exercise science programs. And then we have Vernon Dunn, who teaches in government, I mean, works in government relations, is an expert in motor development and teaches our motor development class. And there are a lot more examples of that, of experts who are teaching in our field. So we have a very diverse faculty and um, I think we're very lucky to have that diverse group of people teaching our students. Next slide. Uh, Dan talked a little bit about this, but we have academic advisors. Dan is the academic advisor for exercise science. And so if you have any questions, you can work with Dan. Our goal when you start a program is that we wanna make sure you're able to walk across the stage four years later and get your diploma. So we're gonna help you as much as possible in order to do that. But part of the job is gonna be on your shoulders too. It's your job to make sure you go to class, you study, you do a good job in classes. But if you get stuck and students get stuck from time to time in their career, make sure you reach out to either Dan or me, or we have lots of other support staff. Dan mentioned some of those. Cynthia Washington is our career advisor. And so make sure you let, you, you, you let us know if you're having trouble. Um, we also, from time to time, will have webinars. In fact, we have one. If you're in our program, you should have gotten notice about it. We have a webinar tomorrow evening for health and wellness and exercise science majors. And that's going to be, we have four people going to talk about careers in health and wellness and exercise science. And we'll do those web webinars from time to time that are people that are out in the field, working in the field, which will talk about careers in your field. Um, and we also have a network of peers and other Tulane alumni, which will have, again, have webinars from time to time where we'll let people that have graduated from our program talk to you one-on-one -on -one about what it was like coming through our program and what they're now doing with a degree in kinesiology. Next slide. We do offer credit for prior learning. Um, this probably won't apply to you, but if, if you are an adult learner coming back to school and you're working in a career, you're working in the field of health and wellness, you may be able to get career, you get credit for that prior learning. And there's a certain process that you have to go through. If you're interested in that, let Dan or I know, we can put you in touch with the people in, in charge of this uh, prior credit for prior learning. Graduate students can get up to six credits. Undergraduate students can get up to 24 credits. Next slide. Um, affordability, our tuition is affordable. This is uh, summer, it's $524 per credit hour. For fall, it's $576 per credit hour. We do offer financial aid. There's lots of different types of financial aid, grants, loans, the Yellow Ribbon Program. We do have a discount for active duty, military, K-12 instructional staff, and public employees. Um, and if you wanna know more about that, you can contact financial aid. We don't directly handle financial aid. If you're interested in financial aid, you need to contact the financial aid office for information about financial aid. Um, again, if you, if you haven't applied yet, applying is very simple. You can get online and complete an application fee. There is a $40 application fee. You do have to have a government issued ID. And if you have any transcripts from previous universities, those have to be uploaded. We do need all transcripts from any previous universities that, that you have attended. Uh, application deadlines, again, 
If you're applying for the summer, that's May 1st. If you're applying for the fall, that's August 1st. And if you're applying for the spring, that's January 1st. Uh, undergraduate students who enroll in courses by those dates are eligible for a one-time discount of $200 off their tuition. So it's a pretty good deal and great reason to go ahead and apply if you haven't applied yet. Anything else you have to add, Dan? Um, yeah, no, just back to the, uh, with the application fee, it'll actually be waived for you by attending this webinar. So they will, once you apply, they'll have, you know, a little database of the webinar attendees, and then that'll automatically, maybe not right away, but, um, but, but that'll get waived for you. And so, um, that was one thing. And then the other thing too, with, uh, you know, supporting you and your educational endeavors and everything as well, like our faculty are great and um, very supportive of our students and understanding of, um, you know, how some are coming back to school or going to school for the first time and whatnot. So in addition to, you know, if you are struggling and stuff like that, I also suggest you develop a good relationship with your teachers um, in your classes and because that could be really helpful um as well to you know um come up with a plan to you know whether you need to get caught up in the class or or anything else you know and they have a lot of good career advice at times as well for you because they work directly in the field for the most part so you'll pick up a lot of tidbits from them too i think that aren't going to be in the textbook necessarily um that'll be helpful and beneficial to you um in the future but uh <clears throat> but yeah, I think, you know, student support success. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm good. If y'all have any questions for me or for, uh, for Dr. Donier, then yeah, um, go ahead and unmute yourself and or type them into the chat or any anything else comes up, just feel free. Yeah, so does anybody have any questions that's on the, the webinar? Hi, um, so I just had a question. It doesn't really apply to right now because, um, but through the um, signing up for classes process for next semester, I noticed that one of the classes, I cannot remember off the top of my mind right now, sorry, but um, we had to pay like $75. Um, is that like? Yeah, that was probably a lab class. So any class that has a lab associated with it is going to have a lab fee associated with it because we have to buy equipment for the labs. Right. Okay. So and you'll use that equipment. That was probably either exercise. It was probably biomechanics or exercise physiology, or oh, motor yeah. learning. It was because, biomechanics. Yep, yeah, because those those will have a lab, and you'll actually be doing things. That's an on ground class, and you'll be doing things in the lab that uses equipment. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So that's a really good question because there's a lab fee associated with any classes that have a have a lab. It's the same for um, the anatomy and physiology. So the anatomy and physiology have a hundred and fifty dollar lab fee, and if you take the two thousand two thousand level lab, it's a it's an online lab, but then that pays for the virtual lab edition that you'll be using in the class. Yeah, and so that'll we, be like. Oh, sorry. I was going to say that'll be like, you know, when uh, we were talking about like taking, checking in allied health programs to see what kind of prerequisites and, and whatnot that they require, you know, like if you're going to go take chemistry one and two and physics and stuff like that through the school, um, they will count towards your degree, of course, um, but those will likely, I believe, have um, a lab fee associated with it as well. And um, I did see that Julie had a question about the post back. Um, yeah, I'll cover that a little bit. Sure. I just wanted to mention, though, too, that the real quick before you do that, that the post back is actually eight courses for 24 credits um, and not six, to my understanding. So uh, I just wanted to mention that before. That, you that is right. It is. It is. Eight, yeah. And the post back is really for somebody that already has a bachelor's degree. And so you don't have to have a bachelor's degree in exercise in kinesiology you can have a post back in a related field and come back and get you know the, the post back in health and wellness so it's eight classes 24 hours that is correct oh i 
I just had another question. What was the webinar that you were talking about that's tomorrow with um, the people who um, graduated with a kinesiology degree? Yeah, so tomorrow, it's not for people. Tomorrow, the webinar, we have four panelists that are experts that are working out in the field. And they're going to talk about what they're doing, their jobs that they're doing. They have a variety of jobs. And they'll talk about the jobs that they're doing. If you want to attend that and you didn't get, are you are you currently listed as an exercise science major at Tulane? I haven't checked my email, so it might be in my inbox. Yeah, so you would have gotten it last Wednesday. Oh. And so if you didn't get it, email me, and I'm going to put my email in the chat right now. If you send me an email, I'll forward you the information about the webinar that's tomorrow. We have one tomorrow that's on um, health and wellness and exercise science. And then we have one next Tuesday that's about careers in sports. Okay. And so I, I'll send you both of them. I'll send you the information for both of them. Just email me if you didn't get that. All right, thank you so much. And then I just had a question. I know that some other programs at Tulane have like a set um, four year plan sort of of the credits that they take so that you know that you're fulfilling all the requirements throughout the years. Does the exercise major have a sort of thing like that? You know, we don't, and, I, and I'm gonna tell you why. Some programs have that. There's a lot of variety that's available for students in taking general education courses. Mm -hmm. And so the way you put your courses together really is gonna depend on the student. Like some students wanna take a lot of classes and they'll take 16 and 18 hours a semester and don't wanna to go to summer school. And some want to take fewer hours each semester and go to summer school. So we don't prescribe a plan for you, but we have the courses listed so that you can put them in the semesters the way you want to put them in. And you can kind of see when they've been offered in the previous years, and that's the way they're gonna be offered in future years. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure, you can contact Dan too, he can help you or me, either one of us. Can yeah, we you. have it set up so that it's kind of like an annual schedule. It's not always 100% set in stone. But the introductory ones, the 1500 and the 3110, they'll usually be offered every semester. And then the other ones, they're usually either in the fall or in the spring. And like the anatomy and physiology sequence, part one is always gonna be in the fall. And so you'll have to have that cell biology class or the eBio, diversity of life class taken um, before you can jump into the anatomy and physiology. So the anatomy and physiology one or the anatomy class one is going to be in the fall. And then the second part of that sequence is always going to be in the spring. So when it, you know, you're getting to that point and you're completing more and more courses and you're trying to set a graduation date and everything, then, you know, I'll be able to help with that. But then you just kind of uh, got to keep a couple of those things in mind to basically take the courses in the semester that they're offered so that they're not delaying anything for you as far as and, you know, graduation goes. And Anne just put in the chat the link to the webinars. So if you're interested in attending those webinars, the one for Thursday is in the chat. So you might want to cut and copy and paste that. And that's the, you do have to register for it. And so that's the registration link for the Thursday. I think it's going to be a really good webinar, I really encourage you, if you're at all interested in learning about people that are working on the field, this will be a great webinar, a really diverse group of, of, of people coming to that webinar. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions? If not, everybody have a great day. Thanks for coming. And again, if y'all have, if you hang up from, wish, think, oh, I wish I would have asked this question or that question, be sure to send me or Dan an email and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Oh, wait, one more. As an incoming freshman, hold on, let me get that back. As an incoming freshman into the program beginning of this fall, how do we know which classes to register for in our major of exercise science? Well, that's a really good question, Juan. And as an incoming freshman, I would encourage you to really focus on your general education requirements. You know, generally students, you may not want to take, the, the classes you want to take if you can get into it are the Kinesiology 1500. That's a freshman level class. That's the first class you could take. It's an introductory class that tells you all about the program. But really as a freshman starting in the fall, you're probably going to focus on your general education requirements and wait and take Kinesiology classes 
either as a, you know, your second semester or as a sophomore in your second year? Good question though, great question. Thank you. Any other questions people have? All right, thanks for attending and uh, everybody have a great day and a safe weekend. Thank, Thank you so you. much.